Hi, everyone. Today, I'd like to speak about how day-to-day -day cognitive processes emerge from collective neural dynamics, and in particular, on how working memory for complex entities like images could co-arise with the irregular neural dynamics observed in many brain areas. First, I'd like to thank my funding sources, as well as many colleagues and friends at Princeton uh, and elsewhere for fun and fruitful discussions about this project. So, how are we able to hold images in mind once the objects are no longer in front of us? The leading model in psychology for image working memory is the visuospatial sketch pad, which says we scribble out information onto some kind of internal mental sketch pad, which persists over seconds to minutes for us to later read out. It's not known how such a sketch pad could emerge from brain activity, however, and a key challenge is that neural activity is often highly irregular, with single neurons producing almost random looking spike trains even across repeated trials of the same task, as in this recording of a cortical neuron spikes as a monkey performed a working memory task. So how can such irregular neural dynamics coexist with working memory? On the one hand, uh, much fascinating theoretical work has shown how random neural networks can generate brain-like irregular activity, as seen by the irregular neural spiking in this simulation by Brunel. Most neural models of working memory, however, store information in fixed points or limit cycles, with the regular firing usually thought of as arising from external noisy inputs. Only a few models have studied how irregular neural activity could coexist more fundamentally with working memory. And it is this latter line of inquiry I hope to extend, and to which end I'd like to share with you a model I've been experimenting with that has some interesting properties that may get at this question. So consider the following model uh, of neural clusters with sparse competition. We'll start with R clusters, and now, for the sake of argument, I will call each cluster a pixel, uh, as we'll think of a large array of such pixels arranged into something like an image, and where you can think of R as standing for resolution, or the number of pixels. Note, of course, that I'm using pixel and image to be concise and to evoke a specific example, but really this project is more generally about the dynamics of macroscopic patterns of uh, activity uh, that have combinatorial structures. All right, so let there now be n neurons in each cluster or pixel and randomly connect the neurons within each pixel corresponding to this block diagonal connection matrix W. Last, we're going to do something slightly funny and add winner take all games among uh, small collections of neurons distributed across pixels. We'll assume for now there are n such competitions taking place given by this matrix V where each row of V is a set of R competing neurons, one from each pixel. These can also be randomized, uh, but it's a bit more transparent to keep the symmetry for now. And the dynamics are as follows. If the previous network activity is Y T minus one, the current input X T is just W times Y T minus one. We then impose the competition so that the final activity, yt, is the exponential of a gain parameter g times the input xt, normalized by a weighted sum of exponentials of each neuron's sister neuron's activity from the winner-take-all games. And in fact, this is just the uh, softmax, softmax function um, generalized and parameterized by this matrix V. So uh, in the large g limit, this means that at time t, each of these neurons gets some random input from within its pixel, but only the neuron with the largest input in this group activates. This keeps the total network activity contained so that only n total neurons activate at each time step, or a fraction of one over r of the whole network. So each sister neuron gets random input from its pixel while simultaneously playing a winner Sorry, so each neuron gets random input from its pixel while simultaneously playing a winner-take-all game with a set of sister neurons in other pixels. Okay, so what are the emergent dynamics? I'll discuss parameters shortly, but if we turn on a representative example of such a network, the first thing we see is that when uh, the gain parameter G is high, so that neurons are either on or off, 
is the familiar irregular neural activity we're after. Individual neurons activate at variable times, and the system does not land at a fixed point or any simple limit cycle. However, if we look at the average neural activity in each pixel, plotted here with one, uh, one trace per pixel, something interesting happens. We start with all pixels about equally active. Those are our initial conditions, which you can see in a network snapshot here uh, in the lower left. As time passes, however, some of the pixels die out with the total network activity spreading over only a subset of pixels, which remains steadily active. Thus, although no single neuron activity, or thus, although the single neuron activity is irregular, the macroscopic network activity relaxes to an apparent attractor. What's more, since no combination of pixels is particularly special, we can set the network into a given macroscopic state by giving a short burst of strong inputs to pixels we want to be active, where it steadily remains, even as the individual neurons strongly fluctuate. If we now apply a weak perturbation to the image held in the network, the dynamics resist the perturbation and restore the original image. A medium perturbation, on the other hand, changes the image into a combination of the original, what was stored in the network before, and the perturbation. Thus, we have a network where sparse irregular neural activity co-emerges with a combinatorial number of macroscopic or quote-unquote image attractors. This phenomenon is robust to noise and many structural variations in the network, such as changing to continuous time or adding uh, um, a few off-diagonal uh, off diagonal weights. And, and as I'll show, there is a simple way to control the complexity or number of active pixels in the attractors. <clears throat> Finally, while the network has no built-in timescales, except an implicit tau equals one, you see occasional slow excursions of pixel intensities um, from their means, which simulations suggest may have uh, heavy tail durations. And these persist even after zeroing the self-couplings of the neurons, so they are, uh, in fact, an emergent property. Okay, so why does all of this happen? Why doesn't activity just spread uniformly over the network? Uh, why do macroscopic attractors emerge? Is it just a finite size effect or is there something deeper going on? It turns out we can answer this theoretically. To do so, we study the macroscopic dynamics of the image, which we'll call theta, which is just the average pixel intensities at time t, a vector in our dimensional space with all positive values. Although the system is deterministic, we can approximate the image dynamics via a noisy map where theta t plus one is given by a function alpha uh, of theta t plus some noise. So theta is a vector wandering around in an r-dimensional space where different points in this space correspond to different images. All components of theta being equal is a uniform gray image Whereas sparser sets of or sparser thetas correspond to image with only a subset of pixels active, which is what the, the overall network tends to produce. The analysis uh, roughly proceeds by first realizing the uniform image is a fixed point of alpha simply by symmetry, and then by showing its stability depends on the number of pixels for the resolution R. So I won't derive everything, but the key uh, to this analysis is to assume spiking is irregular and that uh, its variability drives the deterministic part of the macroscopic dynamics. So we end up writing uh, alpha as the probability or in terms of the probability that a neuron's input from its pixel is greater than other neurons inputs from their pixels. So precisely, at a given time, a neuron's inputs from its own pixel are Gaussian with a mean and variance depending on the number of active neurons in the pixel. Uh, quiet pixels have narrower distributions, whereas active pixels have wider ones. Alpha R is thus the probability that a sample from the rth one of these Gaussians is bigger than samples from all the others. Uh, this drives the dynamics, which once again emerge from assuming irregular variable spiking, since this lack of knowledge of exactly which neurons will spike when couples the overall pixel activity to the mean and variance of its input distribution. When you, um, uh, when you write all this out, each component of alpha 
r of this map, uh, each component alpha r of this map ends up having the form of an integral of a Gaussian times the product of r minus one cumulative Gaussians, where you can see that the different components of theta scale the means and variances of these terms. In any case, this specifies alpha sub r, um, the rth component of our macroscopic map, and one can, in fact, analytically compute the Jacobian of this map alpha along with its maximum eigenvalue at the central fixed point. And the result is that the central fixed point stability depends on the number of pixels r. If you plot this maximum eigenvalue versus r, you see that it starts out less than one, hence stable, uh, but soon crosses one and becomes unstable. There is a transition point where the dynamics change from stabilizing the uniform gray image to destabilizing it. This, moreover, depends on the mean synaptic weight, mu naught, or the scaling of the mean synaptic weight, um, which provides smooth control of where this transition occurs. Uh, thus, when there are enough pixels act uh, when there are enough pixels in the whole network, we no longer expect to see the macroscopic activity confer, converge to a uniform image. Instead, the activity migrates to an image with only a subset of pixels active, corresponding to the separating dynamics uh, we saw in the original network, uh, and which I will call a facial fixed point. Now, I will wave my hands just a little bit here, but facial fixed points act in many ways like central fixed points of lower dimensional systems. And so when the dimension is low enough of one of these facial fixed points, they themselves become stable for the very reasons I just discussed. And the macroscopic activity persists in one, encoding a persistent image with only a subset of pixels active. This reasoning allows one to analytically predict the complexity of images stabilized by the network, which we can see increases with more negative mean synaptic weights, as well as with the total number of pixels in the network. And when we compare the theory to simulation, we see that our theory captures these dependencies in R and U naught, although we note that for large R, one sees fewer active pixels in the simulation than predicted, which is consistent with uh, exactly the type of finite size effects one expects in this network. And thus, the main emergent phenomena of this network, um, which uh, is the stabilization of a combinatorial number of macroscopic patterns atop irregular single neuron activity, can be understood in large part theoretically. To summarize, I've shown you a network model that leads to complex working memory derived not in spite of, but very much from irregular neural activity, and which we can understand in large part analytically. And so overall, I have attempted to shed some light on at least a partial neural model for higher order cognitive function. The model generally generates a highly expressive working memory system simultaneous with several key features of mammalian neural activity, such as sparse irregular firing and slow firing rate fluctuations. Simulations so far suggest this is robust to many variations of the particular model, and I'd like to think it is at least on its way to being biologically plausible. With that, I would like to thank you for your attention, and feel free to shoot me an email if you have any questions about this work.